Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at what I think are 10 of the best travel packs for one bag travel that are currently on the market. And this was a tough list to narrow down to just 10 options. There's many great travel bags from companies such as Koto Paxi, Manal, Topo Designs, Packed that I didn't include in this list, but that I still think are great travel bags. However, I narrowed it down to the ones that you know, really fit my particular preferences for a one bag travel backpack. So they fit a particular size range from about 33 liters to 40 liters, you know, something that I would feel comfortable carrying on to any airline that are well built, that offer weather resistance, good laptop protection, plenty of organization and a very comfortable harness system. So those are some of the factors that I incorporated into my selection. There's obviously many great travel bags that probably fit that criteria. I'll be curious to see which ones I missed in the comments that y'all think I should have considered in this list. And before jumping into the video, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Danny and on this channel, we love reviewing popular travel and everyday carry gear. If you like these types of videos and you'd be interested in seeing more, please consider subscribing as it helps the channel out a lot. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. As we jump into the list, one thing I wanted to mention is that these aren't necessarily ranked from my favorite to my least favorite or vice versa. I tried to include a nice variety of bags in this list, so it is hard to say which one is gonna be best. It's gonna depend on the particular situation or preferences that you might have. I'll try to call out some of the things that I like about each bag for different situations as we go into the list. So I just wanted to mention that right at the start. And the first bag that I wanna talk about is the Evergood CTB35, which is one of the newer travel bags that's been released. I've used this on a few trips already and I've been super impressed with how great it is as a travel bag. Evergoods already has made some of my favorite EDC bags of all time. The CPL24 is one of my go-tos and I was excited to see a similar sort of aesthetic and design language in a larger form factor that would work great for one bag travel. So this comes in at 35 liters, which is a size that is great for carrying onto a variety of airlines. It has a clamshell style opening, which makes it very easy to organize. And one of the standout features for this is the pocket layout. Much like their daily bags, this bag has a lot of pockets that are leader independent. So even when you pack out the main area, you still have tons of flexibility to use the top quick access pocket, the front quick access pocket, all the different organizational places that have been included. This also has a suspended and padded laptop sleeve. Its harness system is comfortable in true Evergoods fashion. It has these straps that sort of come out and contour on your shoulders. I actually like that it doesn't have load lifters, so it keeps things a little bit simpler. They're well padded. The back paneling is Evergoods' is newer design, which offers a nice amount of breathability. It does have an integrated waist belt, which isn't something that I really like to see in a travel bag. I actually would have preferred to not have that uh, included with the bag or at least be able to remove it. But so far it hasn't really bothered me too much even when I've left it topped away. On top of that, the bag is very well built and has some excellent water bottle pockets, nice weather resistance. It feels like it's gonna hold up well you know, for any sort of rough usage that I might have on a trip. It does come in at a little bit of a higher price point, which is, you know, something to consider with Evergoods' bags, but you are getting a lot of value for the money. And if you're looking for something durable, that's gonna have a very subdued aesthetic, and then it's gonna be a fantastic option to check out. Up next, we have the Arquito Acro, which is a bag that has been out for a while, and I feel like it's not talked about enough as far as travel bags go. I've used this relatively recently and I was really impressed with how well it was able to hold all of my stuff. Another 35 liter bag, but because of its less rigid shape and the way that it molds around the items that I place on the inside, even when it's packed out and it can hold quite a bit, it never feels like a huge bag, which is always a big benefit when carrying on to smaller international airlines. It is a pretty lightweight bag. The materials used here make it feel not as heavy as something like uh, a go ruck bag, which we'll look at later in this video. Um, without losing the durability, it has a nice amount of weather resistance. I really like the sort of minimal exterior that it has. It comes with a very comfortable harness system, a breathable back panel. This is a big part of what I look for in my travel bags is having something with these deep air channels and mesh on the back, particularly with a heavy, large bag. You wanna have a lot of breathability. This one has the ability to add and remove a waist belt. Again, I really love the ability to remove the waist belt as I don't typically use them with a bag of this size. And it's a pretty simple layout overall. And you can sometimes find this at a very affordable price point compared to a lot of other travel bags. I believe it was at 120 
at one point it can vary from there up to $200 so it can get a little bit pricey but in general it's just a really solid option if you want something simple that's going to be able to hold a ton of stuff without looking big then this is going to be a fantastic option to take a look at. Since I just mentioned Go Ruck a second ago, I will go ahead and start talking about the GR2, which has been one of my favorite travel bags for many years now. I've done a few different videos on the GR2 34 liter. The version that I have here is the specially released Kaiden edition, so it's got an X Pack fabric, Aqua Garden zippers, an extra handle. It has some features that you're not going to find on the standard GR2 that you can buy from GORUCK, but the sizing and organizational layout is similar enough that I can at least talk through many of the things that I like about this bag. GORUCK bags in general are some of the most well-built and durable bags, which is super important when you're just traveling with one bag. You don't want something tearing on you or failing when you're in a foreign country, somewhere unfamiliar. So the GORUCK bags provide that level of confidence that you know, the bag is going to be able to handle anything that you throw at it. And I really like the kind of minimal tactical aesthetic of GORUCK's bags. That's always been something that I like, not only for the aesthetic, but also the versatility that that provides as far as attaching additional pouches or using clips and things like that. And the organizational layout on the GR2 is one of my favorite. It has not one, but two clamshell style opening. That second clamshell style opening is one of the things that helps it stand out to me as it makes it very easy to take advantage of the full space offered in this front area. Not all bags make it easy to you know, pack this area out and grab what you need. The main compartment is a clamshell style opening that's able to hold a ton of stuff. And you have a good laptop compartment here, suspended, well padded. The harness system on Go Rug bags is well known for being able to handle heavy weights particularly well as they're made for rucking and additional to travel and everyday use. So, you know, the straps here, although they take a little while to break in, they're wide and they're beefy. And the more you use them, the better they're gonna feel on your back. The back paneling on GORUCK bags is something that I've not always been crazy about. It's not the most breathable. You do have some slight air channels, uh, but it doesn't have the breathable mesh that we've seen on something like the Arquito pack that I just mentioned. There are reasons for that that Gorok has mentioned, uh, but you know, since I don't do a lot of the rocking events, I would like to have that extra breathability. Regardless, the bag is just very solid for all the trips that I've used it on. It's held up remarkably well. The Kaiden edition is fantastic. If you can pick one up secondhand, absolutely great. But if not, even just the regular GR2 is gonna be one of the most reliable and durable bags that you can check out. The pricing on it is gonna be a little bit tough to swallow. Even the regular one comes in at around $400, I believe they're pricey bags. You pay a premium for the materials. It's also one of the heavier travel bags that you will run into, which is an issue if you're carrying on to international airlines that have strict weight limits. I've never run into an issue because the bag, especially this 34 liter size, looks small enough that if I'm wearing it on my back, I typically haven't had to have it weighed. There is always a little bit of a risk, so definitely keep that in mind as you're deciding to pick one of these Go Rough bags up. The next bag on the list comes from a company that is very well versed in one bag travel. They've created a variety of options that honestly could have been a part of this list. And I'm talking about Tom Bin. The bag that I have here is the Teco Knot 35, which is one of their newer bags. Uh, but I considered including the Cynic 30, which I left off because it's a little bit smaller and actually works great as a minimal travel bag. So it's already part of a different list that I've done. Their Shadow Guide 33 would have, would have been another great option to consider for this list. But the Teconaut has actually been my favorite for the type of longer term travel that I would do with a bag of this size. I really love the simple layout that it has while still providing some nice organizational options. You have a separate compartment on the bottom that's gonna work great for something like your shoes or toiletries. You have smaller quick access compartments all along the exterior that pair well with Tom Bin's extensive ecosystem of pouches and accessories. You have a large main compartment that you can pack out with packing cubes. The harness system on the Tanko Knot is one of my favorites. Tom Bin is well known for their edgeless straps, which are well padded and comfortable, but the Tanko Knot features this newer back panel design that they've been incorporating on some of their bags that has a little bit more breathability than their bags have traditionally had. So this one feels great. It has a well suspended laptop compartment. So it really has everything that I would kind of be looking for out of a travel bag. On top of that, it has a pretty small form factor, even though it has 
has plenty of capacity, it really tends to look a little bit smaller than some other similarly sized bags, which is gonna be a big benefit when you're trying to carry it onto an airline that is a little bit stricter with the dimensions of their carry-on items. So lots of benefits here, very well built. I really like this Halcyon version that I have, but they sell it in a variety of materials. Tom Van is another company where the bags tend to have a little bit of a higher price point, but if you have the budget to invest in them and you want something reliable and versatile, this is gonna be a great option to check out. The Air Travel Pack has probably been one of my absolute favorite travel bags and top recommendations for people that are looking for a great all-around one-bag travel option for the past couple of years. It's one of the bags that I've used the most, and they've recently updated the bag. This is the Travel Pack 3 that I have here, and in typical air fashion, they've just continued to improve what is already a fantastic bag. They've added you know, all of the additions that you could have wanted from version two to version three, so they've improved the laptop compartment, They've added some more flexibility to the harness system with load lifters. You can attach or remove a waist belt. They've increased the size on the regular Travel Pack 3 to 35 liters. It's not a huge difference, but it's nice to have that extra bit of space. There's some extra organizational options and pockets that have been included all throughout. Uh, and so everything has just been refined and improved from what was already a fantastic option with the Travel Pack 2. Again, that was probably the one that I would recommend to most people. It's one of the, my favorites, honestly. And it's great to see Air just improving on the design, still delivering a very solidly built bag. I really love the ballistic nylon that they use in all of their bags. It's weather resistant, it's durable, it's easy to clean. They have some great YKK zippers that again, just keep all of your stuff protected from the elements. You can lock everything. They really kind of accounted for everything that you would want out of a travel bag. Like the GORUCK backpack, this does tend to be on the heavier side due to the padding and feature set that's included, but you do get a lot of value for that weight. So if you can manage that and you're just looking for one of the most sleek and versatile travel bags that is currently on the market, this is gonna be a fantastic option to take a look at. Another bag that has been around for a few years now is the Tortuga Outbreaker, and this continues to be one of the most comfortable travel backpacks that I've ever used. I really love the harness system on this bag in particular. The straps are super well padded, and the back panel has so much breathability. I love the ventilation and air channels that are provided here. You also have a lot of adjustability with the harness system. You can raise it or lower it depending on your height. You have load lifters. They also include a very well padded and comfortable waist belt that you can remove if you don't wanna use it. The Outbreaker is offered in two sizes. This is the 35 liter size. They also have a 45 liter. To me, this is the ideal size for carrying on to all types of airlines as I've mentioned a few times throughout the video. And I love that this has a sailcloth exterior. It's kind of an X-Pack fabric, which feels like it's gonna offer a ton of weather resistance. You have aqua guarded YKK zippers. It also helps keep the bag a little bit more lightweight. It's not a light bag due to all the padding that's included, but this material tends to feel a little bit lighter, at least to me. And then you have tons of organizational options all throughout if you like everything to have its own place. It has a very well padded laptop compartment and tablet area. If you're a digital nomad, you have a lot of tech stuff and you want a dedicated space for that, this bag has a really interesting layout to keep that stuff easily organized. And again, the comfort on this is unmatched. I really love the aesthetic. It's just a really simple, kind of futuristic, techy vibe. You have exterior water bottle pockets. So it really checks off all the boxes for what you, do, what you would want if you were traveling with one bag. And if you're looking for something that's gonna be durable, and if comfort is your top priority, then I definitely recommend you give this one a look. When you think about traveling the world with one bag, one of the brands that probably first comes to mind is Osprey. Everywhere that I've ever traveled, I see a ton of Osprey bags. And after using the Farpoint for a long time, I can definitely understand why. Osprey knows their stuff when it comes to making comfortable and versatile travel bags. The Farpoint is one of the go-tos for many people due to the durability that it has. And it's, you know, in a little bit more of an affordable price range compared to something like the GORUCK or Evergoods bags that we featured in this video. Without sacrificing on quality, it feels like this is something that's gonna hold up very well to any environment that you might take it into. Osprey offers 
both the Farpoint and other types of travel bags in a variety of sizes. You can really start to have very large travel bags. We've looked at something like their Ozone Duplex backpack, which actually combines a travel bag and a day bag together. But to me, this is probably the one that I would recommend to most people, the Farpoint 40, which is gonna be a size that it's easy to carry on to most airlines. It's gonna offer plenty of space, maybe a little bit extra if you're newer to one bag traveling, you need some flexibility. It's gonna give you a little bit more capacity than some of the 35 liter bags that we've looked at. It has a clamshell style opening, some nice organizational options. The harness system on the Farpoint is one of the most comfortable that I've used. The waist belt on it is something that you can't remove, but I give them a pass on that because it's so well integrated and it actually adds a lot of comfort and support when you're wearing this bag packed out for a longer period of time. The straps feel great. There's a lot of breathability. On top of that, you can hide the straps away for when you're you know, throwing this into an overhead storage compartment. You have comfortable handles, some straps on the front to give you some additional flexibility with attaching jackets or other large items. And so this is a little bit more of a technical looking bag. It definitely looks like a travel backpack, but if you're looking for something functional, durable, and a more affordable price range that you know you're gonna be able to count on, then the Osprey Farpoint has been for many years and remains one of the greatest options that you can check out. Bellroy is another company that puts out very high quality bags that have a more sophisticated and sort of professional aesthetic. They're very minimal bags that feel like they're gonna blend in well into a professional environment. And they, their transit line of bags has quickly become one of my favorite series of bags. They offer it in a few different sizes. The Transit Work Pack is one of my favorite daily bags. They have the standard Transit Backpack, which comes in at about 28 liters and is a solid minimal travel bag. And then they have the Transit Plus, which I have here, it comes in at about 38 liters. So it's getting into a larger travel bag territory. Uh, but it is fantastic to use for one bag travel. The amount of things that this can hold is really impressive without it looking overly big, which again is one of the most important things for me with the travel bags that it doesn't look like I'm wearing a house on my back. You know, I don't wanna make it too obvious when I'm going onto a international airline that I have a huge bag. You know, I don't wanna have to weigh it or check it or anything like that. And so having a bag that has this sort of sleek look, even when it's packed out, is a fantastic bonus. It has a great organizational layout, you know, top quick access pocket. The laptop compartments on the Transit series are some of the best that I've seen of any bag. They're suspended, they offer a nice amount of padding, they're easy to access. The harness system on the Transit Plus is very, very comfortable. You have well padded straps, a breathable back panel that has some nice ridges to provide you with airflow and ventilation. There is a luggage pass through here, I'm not sure why. This is definitely not the type of bag that I would pair with a carry-on bag. I suppose it's still a nice thing to have in case that's something that you're looking for. It has an integrated waist belt. Again, I'm always not crazy about these waist belts that you can't remove, but you can tuck it away. It doesn't really add that much in my opinion. It's fairly small and slim, but the rest of the harness system on this bag is so fantastic that I don't think it's a huge deal. Uh, the materials seem to offer a nice amount of weather resistance. Um, and I, you know, it's a bag that I've enjoyed using when I've needed a little bit more space some extra flexibility than some of the other bags that I've looked at on the list. And if that's something that you're looking for in a very sleek package and you have a little bit of a higher budget, then this is gonna be one of the best options to consider. When you think about travel packs, in addition to the kind of standard travel backpacks, there's also these sort of backpack duffel hybrids that have been coming out a little bit more on the market. Companies such as Wandered offer really great options. And my personal favorite is the Nomadic Travel Bag, which has been one of the bags that I've been using for the longest periods of time. This is the initial version that came out several years ago. It's still going strong, very well built. And this is one of the larger travel bags that I use. It comes in at 40 liters. They've also released a 30 liter version of this bag if you're looking for something more compact. But this 40 liter is able to hold everything that I could want for a longer trip. Definitely a couple of weeks of travel very easily for the way that I pack. And it just is a very, very versatile bag. There's a ton of features on this bag. Maybe to some they might feel extraneous or a little bit more like bells and whistles as opposed to core travel bag features. Some of the things, some of the things around how the straps work and the, you know you can pull on the shoulder straps and the, the hand straps get tucked away. You know, that doesn't always work that perfectly, but for the things that I look for in a travel bag, this does them exceptionally well. Starting with the harness system, even though this doesn't have a ton of breathability because this uh, 
part that rests on your back doesn't have any mesh or elevation, it still feels very stable when the bag is packed out. All the weight is distributed super nicely and the straps that are included for your shoulders have felt great even over longer periods of time when this is packed out. There's also a removable waist belt that's included with the bag which helps add some um, weight distribution and stability. And then you have you know, this just simple large compartment with a clamshell style opening that you can load in with a bunch of stuff and has a ton of space, a dedicated tablet and laptop sleeve on this flap. And then there's just a ton of organizational options all throughout that are very well integrated. That's one of the things when you have a bag that has a lot of pockets, you wanna actually be able to use those pockets in ways that make sense. And I think this bag does it extremely well. So you have a shoe compartment, which you know is actually integrated well into the main area. It does take up some of the volume, but you're able to fit even a larger pair of shoes into that compartment. You have quick access pockets along the front with a fleece lining. Again, you can easily get your stuff in and out. You have a really unique take on a water bottle pocket. It has sort of a waterproof area that is not a traditional water bottle pocket, but it can hold it and keep it separate from the rest of the items in your bag. And it also works as a compartment to maybe store some of your wet or dirty clothes. You have exterior compartments that just have tons of small little pockets for all of your tech items and any travel stuff that you need to get to while you're on the road. So, you know, it really just checks off the boxes for everything I, that I would be looking for out of a travel bag. Offers a lot of weather resistance. You know, it's gotten its scuffs here and there, but for how I've treated this bag over the years, it actually looks remarkably well. They've updated this to include better materials now, better zippers, so it's gonna be a little bit more expensive, but if you're looking for more of a duffel style travel bag that can hold a ton of stuff and that's gonna be reliable for many years to come, then it's gonna be a great option to take a look at. If you're looking for a travel backpack that's gonna give you a little bit more capacity and all of the core features that you would need out of a one bag travel option, the standard luggage coat travel backpack is definitely an interesting option to consider. It's been around for a while now. I don't hear it mentioned as much and that may be because it's not the sleekest looking bag. You know, it doesn't stand out as far as the aesthetics, but it, everything that it does do, it does very, very well. So it's made out of what seems like a ballistic nylon exterior. It comes in at 35 liters according to the company, but to me it's always felt a little bit bigger. It also has the ability to expand to give you that extra bit of flexibility. So this is one of my favorite options to recommend if you're a little bit newer to one bag travel, you maybe haven't organized your stuff in a way that allows you to pack down very small. So this gives you that extra bit of space as you kind of you know learn to travel a little bit more minimally. The bag has a very comfortable harness system, breathable straps and back panel. You can tuck the straps away and use this as a shoulder bag as well. You have tons of pocketing, two exterior quick access pockets, a water bottle pocket, clamshell style opening, and uh, you have an interesting laptop compartment that's very similar to Tom Bin's cache system where it has an integrated laptop sleeve that you can pull out um, when you're going through TSA. So, you know, it still feels like your device is gonna be well protected. And yeah, it just is a very solid bag for, for traveling with one bag. It's not gonna, again, stand out against some of the other more kind of flashy items that we've looked at on the list, but you know, it checks off the boxes, it's durable, it's gonna be in maybe a little bit more of an affordable price range. So if that's something that you're looking for and you want something a little bit larger that you're gonna be able to rely on and that's gonna you know, give you a lot of comfort, then that's gonna be a great option to consider. When you think about one bag travel, typically that means a large travel backpack that can hold all of your stuff. And many times people have to pack some sort of smaller day bag for use when they're exploring a city at their destination. So that can be some of those packable backpacks that we've seen from companies such as Matador or something flat that you lay across the top of your bag like the Air Go Pack or the Tortuga Outbreaker. So there's some great packable backpacks, but there's also companies such as Knack that take one bag to a whole new level with the ability to expand and compress. There's a few different bags that are doing this on the market. The Nomadic Travel Pack is one that I used for many years and actually works fantastically. However, Knack has really stepped up and created what I think is one of the best hybrid implementations of this type of bag. So it works equally well as a travel bag or a day bag. That's really where these bags struggle is you get caught in the middle where it, it's not really an easy day bag to use due to its organizational layout or it doesn't hold enough to work as a fully fledged travel backpack. 
and this one walks that line pretty well. There's also a few different sizes of the NAC series of bags, depending on if you prefer to have a little bit more space for travel or if you wanna focus a little bit more on day-to-day -day use. The version I have here is their medium version, which I think kind of offers the best of both worlds. So in the way that I currently have it here, it's about a 17 liter, 20 liter day bag. So it's very slim. It has a professional aesthetic. They focus a little bit more on business travel and giving you something that you can comfortably take into the office with a nicer outfit. And the version that I have here is also the Series 2, which has been updated as far as the aesthetics and the organizational layout. It now has, you know, locking compartments all throughout. It still has the same great ability to expand to over 30 liters. So when I pack this out with packing cubes, it's able to hold about the same as I could fit into many of the 35 liter bags that I showed in this list. And then when I compress it down, it just works so well as a day bag, the way that its main compartment and other organizational areas are laid out. It really doesn't affect how I use it regardless of whether it's EDC or traveling. I can just expand it out. The travel compartment opens up like a suitcase so you can pack it out as you would any travel bag. And then when you arrive at your destination, you can take those items out, compress it up with the zipper that it has. And then you have this sleek day bag that you can use. You also have the ability to tuck the straps away. You have a luggage pass through if you're not using it as a travel bag. The back panel has a nice amount of padding got this soft gel-like material, which has felt great. The straps are also pretty comfortable. They're not as robust as some of the other travel bags on this list. Again, there's that trade-off when you're trying to use this as a daily bag. If comfort is your absolute top priority, that would be one thing that I would be wary of with this bag. But if you really want to travel with one bag that's gonna work well for your day-to-day -day and for travel that you can take into the office that's gonna offer a great organizational layout and a sleek look, then this is gonna be a great option to consider. And so that's it. Those are what I think are 10 of the best travel bags for one bag travel at the moment. If you have any questions on the bags that I featured in the video or suggestions for other travel bags that I should check out, as always, please let me know in the comments. And I know this is not an exhaustive list. There's still a lot of travel bags that I haven't even had a chance to check out. And I'm sure there's gonna be new versions of travel bags released. So I'll make sure to continue to test them and probably do a follow-up video to this in the future. And if you like this type of video and you'd like to see other kind of comparisons and roundups that I've done, make sure to check out some of the links that I'm including in the description below to some of my favorite minimal travel bags, some of my favorite everyday bags, my favorite waterproof bags, budget bags. I've tried to do a bunch of different roundups, so I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on those and other types of videos like these that you would like to see in the future. So I wanna thank you again for watching and supporting the channel. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like, and if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos, and we'll see you in the next one.